Hey students, let's go over uh, 1.8 box plots and outliers. After this lesson, you should be able to understand what resistance means. Use the 1.5 IQR rule to identify outliers and make and interpret box plots of quantitative data and compare distributions of quantitative data with box plots. Okay. All right. So go ahead and take a moment now, and we're going to do example number one. What is the resist? What is a resistant measure of center? Okay. So I have two examples here, A and B, and I want you to do three things with those. I want you to go ahead and calculate the mean, median, and draw a picture. Okay. Go ahead and press pause, and then press play for the solution. All right. So if you calculate the mean for um, this one, I've got x, x bar. If I add all those up, I get 15 divided by 5, which means I get an x bar of 3. And then if I calculate the median, which is just the middle, it's an odd distribution, so that would also be 3. Okay, now if I drew a picture, and let's just say I do it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I do graph that looks like this, if I just did a dot plot, then my graph kind of looks, what, symmetrical. And then the mean would be actually in the center. And the median would also be at the center. But if you did the average for this one over here, x bar equals summation for this one would be 7, 9, 10. So 60 divided by 5 numbers would give me an x bar of um, 1, 12. And then, <clears throat> if I did the median, that would just be the middle number, which would be 3. Okay, so now if I do a dot plot, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 50, something way out there, right? <clears throat> and so now if I draw a kind of curve to my distribution, you know, it's going to look something like that. And the, the average would be somewhere in my pink line, something like over here, right? It's kind of like the tipping point, they call it. So x bar would be around 12. <clears throat> but the median is still back over here. OK? So, which one of these was really, um, this one we know about, this is my unusual number, right? Can you imagine, like, um, you say, what's, how much money is in your pocket with a group of, of friends or students? And you say, one, two, three, four, five. And you got a student over here who just maybe got paid from work or is super rich, and they pull out a $50 bill, right? What happens is we're going to, talk about which one of these was actually pulled this direction. So let's go ahead and answer that. Is the mean a resistant measure of center? center? And the answer is no. Extremely large, in that case we have 50, or small data will change the mean towards the extreme observation. I use the word pull, right? It's pulling it towards, um, away from the median. 
Okay, so what was the other one? Our other one is um, is the median a resistant measure of center? Did the median move anywhere there? Especially in our last picture, the answer is what? Um, it didn't move, so it resists or says no. So is the median a resistant measure of center? The answer is, uh, sorry, when I say that the median doesn't move, right, it wasn't being pulled by the extreme measure, the outlier, then it is resistant. So yes, extreme observations do not cause a shift in the median. So again, the median <clears throat> can resist, it can say no to being pulled by that extreme observation. So then it just brings us to a big idea, what is what is a resistant measure? It is a measure of data that is not easily influenced by extreme observations or outliers. Just think about it as teenagers, right? If you don't want to be easily influenced by some type of so-called friends, you might sometimes resist their offers to do something really extreme, maybe going against what you've been taught. Um, so that's another way of thinking about it, okay? All right, so we'll review some um, spread here, measures of spread. Spread that jam, I call it. What is the range? See if you guys can take pause and see if you guys can fill out the first couple of boxes. We talked about this last um, lesson, but I want to kind of review that in the, in the idea of being resistant. Well, remember the range is the highest number, which is another word for the maxed, minus the lowest number. And the range is also a single number's answer. Okay, question. Is, is it a resistant, is the range a resistant measure of spread? Well, if you think about it, the min and max change quite a bit, right? So, no, it's not resistant because it changes when extreme observations change. And if that uh, rich kid came in, pulls out the $50 bill, that changes it, right? All right, so we talked about these before, but what are quartiles and how do you find them? So here's my question. My question is, how much is in $1? How many quarters are in $1? Well, quarters, there's four quarters in $1, and it's really 25 cents, right? Like one quarter is 25 cents, so four quarters equal dollar. Four 25 cents equals dollar, okay? So quartiles, what are uh, quartiles and how do you find them? Well, you divide, the quartiles are divided into 25 cent percent chunks. You find the median of the data set, so the middle is... Um, 
is the uh, 50%, right, or the second quartile. Number two, then you find the median of the lower half of the data. Okay, this gives you, this finds you your first quartile. And then find the median of the upper half. And this will help you find the third quartile. All right, so I'm review. What is the interquartile range? The IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Okay, let's talk to this about a little more. How much is three quarters? 75 cents. How much is one quarter? 25 cents. So 75 minus 25 gives you 50. The IQR measures the range of the middle 50% of the data. Okay. Is the IQR a resistant measure of spread? Explain. The answer is yes, it is. Why? Because it ignores the upper 25% and the lower 25, that's 25%. All right, so another idea here is um, the IQR is also resistant because it is it is based on the median. Remember that fifty percent, and it has it. I will show a visual there today, which is also also resistant. All right, so here's a big idea for today. What is an outlier? An outlier is an extreme. Outlier is an extreme observation or data point. that is away from the rest of the data. All right, how do you identify the outliers? Well, you need to use the outlier rule. What is the outlier rule? Well, the first thing you need to do is find the IQR. Find the IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1. Then number two, you need to find one and a half, 1.5 times the IQR. Then the number three thing you're going to do is you're going to take the Q3 value and you're going to add the 1.5 IQR. Okay. And then I'll explain over here. Anything bigger, anything bigger is an outlier. And then the other one is Q1 minus 1.5 IQR. 
and anything uh, lower is an L here. Okay, so we kind of reviewed resistance here, up here, and then we talked about the quartiles and then how we can use the quartiles to figure out things that are outliers. Let's move on to the um, next page. All right, so what is a five number summary? The first thing in a five number summary is number one, the minimum value. Number two, then you have your first quartile. Remember that's abbreviated as Q1. Then third, you have the median. They abbreviate that as med. Then fourthly, you have the third quartile, which is Q3. And then the fifth one is the maximum value. And that's just our max. Okay, so <clears throat> the five number summary actually can be drawn as a visual. Watch this. And I made a mistake in here. Whoops. And what you have here is a box. This is why they call it a box plot. And I'm gonna I'm we'll create one together, but let's just draw this out here. So this right here is our minimum. The left side of the box, this is the Q1. Here, this is our median. So hopefully you see my color coding. The right side of the box is Q3. And then right here is our max value. Let's see if we can add a couple more things in here. So you might also see some stars. That would be an outlier. <laughs> and uh, another common mistake, let's see. Um, let's see if we can use uh, each of these here represents 25%. So each part. All right, so that's a five number summary. Let's try, let's see if Jose can help us answer some questions. Max hours, the number of hours Jose studied each day for the last month is shown in the box and whisker plot. What percent of the data lies between 1.5 and 3.25? So from here to here. So they want to know the box. Remember, this is 25. 25, 25, and another 25. So you have 25 plus 25 gives you 50%. 50 percent. 50 percent of the data lies between uh, 1.5 and 3.25 hours. <clears throat> And if you think about that, that was basically the interquartile range, right? Q1 to Q3. All right. What was the greatest amount of time Jose studied in a day? Okay, if you look at our data, there's kind of like three points here. One, three points. There's like six, sorry. Four, five, and six. So here, this one's not attached to the box plot. So, um... Just use the words you just saw in the sentence. The greatest amount of time Jose studied in a day 
is six hours. <clears throat> what is the IQR of this box plot? Remember the IQR has a formula of the Q3 minus Q1. So here is our minimum, Q1, median. This value right here is Q3, and this one is your max value. So we're going to need um, Q3, which looks like let between 3 and that one's 3.5. So this is probably 3.25. Q1 is at one and a half, and if you subtract that, you get about uh, 1.75 hours. Notice I have a number and I have some units there. <coughs> Identify any outliers in in this one. Okay, so we already have IQR is equal to 1.5, and then if you look back up here at our formula. We have Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. And the other color we had was blue, one Q1. Minus the 1.5 IQR. So I'm just going to substitute in numbers <coughs> and then go from there. So 1.5 for the IQR. 1.75 and Q3 we look above is a 3.25 plus 1.5 times 1.75 so 3.25 plus I'm going to use my calculator that is a 1, so 1.75 times 1.5 gives us 262.5. And then if we add those uh, together, I get 5.875. All right. Let's go ahead and look over here. Just complete this one. Q1, <coughs> um, 1.5 minus 1.5 times the 1.75. 1.5, um, we already multiplied 1.5 times. Um, this would give you a negative 2.625. And then if you subtract those two values, 1.5 minus 2.625, you'll get a negative um, 1.125. Okay, what do those values mean? So if I go back up to my number line, <coughs> the lower outlier boundary, or they call that the lower fence, I'm going to build a fence at negative 1. So that's negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so if I had any values over here, this would be an outlier. Okay, so we don't have any values out there. So there's no outliers um, to the bottom there. All right, let's look at 5.875. Let's go find that. Let's build a fence. There's my fence. If there's any data points over here, this would be an outlier. Do we have one? We do, right there. Oh, I just drew all over my notes. Okay. So we can say that the value that represents six is an outlier because it is past the upper fence. Or you can say we used our formula, right? <coughs> so
So again, it is an outlier because it's past um, this fence here in blue. Anything going towards the right over here, okay? All right. So steps to create a box plot, or they also call this a box and whisker. I think that was the elementary one. Why? Because you had this like box and then the median. Okay, so just common mistakes of students. Okay, this is the whisker. Common mistakes here, okay? Number one, um, let's see if I can make it clear. This pink line that I'm about to draw, it doesn't go through there. That one's wrong, so let's erase it, okay? The second one is students write a number line um, on the box plot. This is wrong, and we're going to create one together. Just showing to you now, so don't do that. Oh, I just I just raised a bunch of numbers. Oh, nope. Uh, the number line goes below a box plot. Okay, so it would look like something like this. Okay. All right, so let's get some steps here. Number one, uh, write the data. Write the data in numerical order, or let's just say ascending. Numbers going from small to big. Okay. So let's do that with our example over here. Let's let's start our numbers here. So I got 11, 12, 12, 13, 13. We've done this before, guys. Literally, I told the student, write your check marks. Guys, you'll be like me. I just made a mistake. I forgot that 12 right here. So let's, let's just change this number. And uh, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so we just roam from least to greatest, okay? All right, what's next? Now we need to record the minimum and maximum. Okay, so, all right, so <laughs> we just put in a numerical order. And the second thing you're going to do is record the minimum and maximum. Okay, so there's my minimum, here's my maximum. I'm going to make a number line where we have some space. And I notice the numbers are from 10 to 18, so I could do something like 10. And let's just do, um, let's do 18. So, uh, that's too many, huh? 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, so this is my number line. Pay attention. This is a common mistake of students. And the minimum, I did in blue, should have done it in different color, but uh, 11 and 18. So notice how it is above the number line we have there. Above. Number three, determine the median. Determine the median. <laughs> okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine numbers. Okay, so I because I have nine numbers, it's an odd. So I'm going to have uh, four to the left, four to the right, and 13 is going to be my median. Okay, so this is actually your... Um, 13, so find 13, and that's going to be the middle of your box, okay? That's going to be the middle of your box. Okay, number four, find 
the first and third quartiles. Okay, so based off of these numbers here, we have to locate what our um, what our first quartiles are. So on notice how I did not because it's an odd. I don't actually highlight the median. The numbers there in underlined in white. I'm gonna have to find the median is actually right here, right where that blue line is. So my Q median of the lower half is twelve. Twelve plus twelve divided by two. And over here, you're going to notice that, <coughs> again, I did not include the upper half numbers. You're not including the median. You're only including what's in underlined here. So that is between here. So 14, uh, the, the average of 14 plus 16 divided by 2, that's going to be 30. 30 divided by 2 is 15. So quartile 3 is 15. Okay, so now <coughs> 12 and 13, sorry, 15, and let's close this, this is our box, okay, notice the horizontal line does not go through the box, and let's just review, this is your um, minimum, this is your max, the blues there are your quartiles in Q2 or your median. Okay? All right. Now, we don't have that on these examples, but let's go ahead and finish this. Look for outliers. Using the 1.5 IQR rule. Remember that's just Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR and Q3 plus. <coughs> and just think of it, um, critical thinking, the reason why it's plus is because it has to go above the highest number and this kind of goes minus below what you normally see. And then I kind of already went ahead and did it, but you construct the box plot with the five number summary. Okay. So that's how you create a box plot. Let's go on to the uh, next example below. All right, example number three, <coughs> elections. The age of candidates in an election are 23, 48, 49, 55, 57, 63, and 72. Create a box plot of the data. All right, go ahead and pause. You go ahead and try that yourself, and then I'll work it out with you. All right, something that's nice you should notice about those numbers, they're all in order for us, so let's count how many there are. Our data is seven. We have seven numbers in here. So I can just find my minimum and my maximum. <coughs> um, those numbers are 23 and 72. And let's go ahead and do the median because it's odd. I'm going to have three numbers to the left of the pink and three numbers to the right. So my median is 55 and now I need to find Q1 and Q3. Remember don't include because it's an odd set do not include the median. So 48 would be my um, Q1 and the median of the top half that would be 63 because there's only three numbers there. And then now we can create, this is the hard part, creating a number line. So I see 23 
Um, uh, so you can go something like tens, twenty. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, <laughs> 75, 80. Okay, and again, remember your, your box spot's going to go above, so I have a minimum of 23 and a max of 72. I have uh, 48 and 63 and then I have my median at 55 and then those are my whiskers here is my box okay find the IQR so that's just um, Q3 minus Q1, so that would be 63 minus the 48, so our IQR is equal to 15. Are there any outliers? Let's show our work. So you can write down your formula from above, Q1 minus 1.5 IQR, and let's draw this one over here, Q3 plus 1.5 IQR. Let's just substitute in our values here. She is green. So Q1 value is 48, and minus 1.5, and the IQR from above is 15. You can call this a U LF, lower fence, so 48 minus 22.5, this gives me a lower fence of 25.5. Try a different color. How about purple? All right, so our Q3 is 63 plus 1.5 times 15. Save yourself some time. You already have that information over here. So that one is, uh, pay attention, 22.5 positive. So this is our upper fence so 63 plus 22.5 gives me 85.5 <clears throat> so let's go ahead and mark where the upper fence is something way up here and then we set our green one 22 20, 25.5. Okay, so that is the lower fence. So anything in that direction is going to be an outlier. And anything, um, this is my upper fence. Any numbers to the right of this would be an outlier. So we do have an outlier. Let's write that. The only age beyond the lower fence or lower boundary of the outlier is 23, comma, which makes it an outlier. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and try these three multiple choice examples. Again, I want you to pause the video, I want you to try it, and then when you're done, press play and then we'll go through them together.
All right, question number four. Roller coaster speeds. Which of the following statements is false? I'm going to underline that. False. Okay. All right, so let's just make sure we are on the same page. Q1. Mm. That is my min. This is my minimum. Q1. Q2, or the median, Q3, max, and remember the star is the outlier. The distribution is symmetrical. Okay, symmetrical would look like they're equally spaced. Does that make sense? Um, but this one right here looks a little bit um, longer than this side. And we know that it's not going to be symmetrical because you have a outlier. So it's kind of going to look something like that. So this one is false. Let's try different problem. Distribution is not symmetrical. That is true. Or another word is asymmetrical. The distribution has an outlier. We see that. And the distribution has a gap of data. So the gap would be there's a number at 90, but there's no number in between here. So that is true. So um, the one that is false is that this is not symmetrical. Okay, let's check out this one. Find the measures of central tendency for the set of data. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's just put them in order. 17, 19, 25... Uh, 34, 36, 36, 45, 45, and 98. Got an unusual suspect there. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly just count how many I have. I got n equals 9. Okay, so... Um, let's figure out the mean. Our mean is x bar, so the summation of all of our values divided by number in our list. So if I punch that into my calculator, let's, I think I downloaded one. So let's, let's see if I have one. Let's try this one. Um, sorry, I got to get all the values. There we are. Okay, no, I'm not enjoying. It. Okay, list one. So again, you press stat, and then you go to edit, and then I'm going to type in those numbers: seventeen, thirty-six, uh, forty-five. 98, 25, and if you're still learning how to use your calculator, um, a good one is just going to the internet, going to YouTube, and then type in whatever you have, Casio FX 300 plus, and then write in like one var, one variable statistics, or one var, V-A-R, stats. And, um, no, no, 19. Forty-five and thirty-six. Okay. So I think I'm missing a number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I knew that because there's the ninth number. There it is. Nineteen, forty-five, and thirty-six. Okay. So now I can do a couple things here. I can press stat, right next to the left button, and maybe I want to right here. Um, Oh, that calculator says pro plus, so it won't, it won't put it in order for me. We can do that by hand. Okay, let's get the average. One var stats. No, nope, I don't want it in there. So again, clear. And then I want to go out of here. So I'm going to press second mode. Now I'm going to go stat, calculate, one var stats. This one, which already has it, and just press calculate. 
Okay, so there we have the uh, numbers that we need for uh, our average. So 355 or 39.4. Three fifty five and three fifty five divided by nine gives us a thirty nine point four. All right, let's see what we're working with. Okay, no, no, yes, and yes. Okay. Um, we can look at the mode, and I see 236 and 245s. 236s, and so um, the mode would be 36 and 45. That one looks good. Okay, this one's wrong. It only has 45. So then we know that C is our correct answer. To double check that, let's just go through and make sure nine numbers. So four and four to the left. So there's four here, four here. So that means 36 is the median. That works. And then you can do the math for the outlier, but that number looks way off. It's an unusual number. All right. Question number six. The table shows the greatest recorded weights of fish. So I got a bunch of fish here. Which measure is most affected by the outlier? Which one do you think is the outlier? I think it is this swordfish. Okay, so I'm going to calculate, um, let's calculate over here with the outlier and over here without. Okay, so I'm gonna punch in those numbers and Let's figure out what our numbers are. So 90, 46.5, uh, 44, 612.75, 243, and 34.38. So I got a stat calc, one of our stats, uh, average of 178.43. What is the mean median? So 44, 46.5, um, I forgot that one, 34.38, and then um, 90, 243, and 612.75. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means the median would be the average of these of these two numbers. So 46.5, put in your calculator, plus 90 divided by 2 gives us a median, median of 68.25. Okay, no mode, uh, no mode. And then the range would just be the max minus the minimum. So that would be 612.75 minus the 34.38. 612.75 minus 34.38. Okay, so that would give me 578. Point three seven for the range. All right, let's do all of that uh, now without the six hundred and twelve. So if I go back to my list and I just go and delete the six twelve stat calculate one var stats. I get an average of 91.5, okay? 
And then if I list out my numbers, and I don't include that number, and so I just have these numbers over here to the left, my median would be uh, 46.5. The mode would be none, and the range now would be um, 243 minus 34.38. And that gives me 208.62. Okay, so let's go ahead and compare these now. Um, which measure is most affected by the outlier? So the difference between the mean is 178.43 minus 91.5. That would give me a number of 86, so blue, triangle for delta, science students know that's the difference or change, 86.93. What's the difference between the median? 68.25 um, minus 46.5. And that gives me a difference of 21.75. The mode, there was no change, 0 minus 0. And then the range, the difference is 578.37 minus the blue range, 208.62. That gives me 369.75. So the correct answer for which measure is most affected would be the range, right? because the max was just changed so much by that big fish, the swordfish. All right, go ahead. Go ahead and try um, things on page number four, and then I'll go over those with you. All right, let's go over this last one here. This is the, um, has a bunch of questions here. Let's read it together. Uh, for questions 12 to 23, refer to the box and whistle or box pot graphs below that compare homework time verse uh, per night with TV um, time per night for the same group of sophomores. Ooh. Guess you can change this to like smartphone. I'm sure it's the same. But what you have here is two box plots, parallel box plots. They're parallel because they're right next to each other. And now we can compare the data, okay? All right. So what percent of sophomores watch TV for at least 15 minutes per night? At least means starting at 15. Um, so greater than or equal to 15, okay? So let's go over to TV watched. And I go here, at least 15 minutes, so 16, 17, anything in this direction. Well, remember, that represents 25%, and this is 25, 25, and 25. So you need those three together, that'll give you 75%. And then we erase it so we have more space to mark up our colors. Okay, next question. What is the third quartile for TV time data. Third quartile for TV time. So remember, this is the minimum, Q1, Q2, Q3, and essentially in some ways that's like Q4, right? So <coughs> the third quartile is going to be right there, 110. 110. And I erase it so I can mark it up again, just like you have pencil. All right, question number 14. Is it more common for a sophomore at this high school to spend more than one hour on homework <coughs> or more than one hour watching TV? Explain. Okay, so let's go to the one hour of homework. So homework, I'm going to use orange. homework is orange and we go to one hour so that's 60 minutes okay what do you notice about that 
min q1, q2, q3. Okay, what does this mean? How many how many how much money is it three quarters? 75 cents. So that's 75 percent. Does that make sense? So um is it more common for a sophomore at this high school to spend more than, more than means going in this direction. So that amount of data, so this is 75%. So this, what they're asking for there is 25% versus, um, or more than one hour watching TV. So if you look at TV though, look here, 60 minutes. And what do you notice about that? That's in the middle of the box plot. That's the median or Q2. So this represents 50% of the data and going in that direction is 50% of the data. So which is more common that a sophomore in high school spends more than one hour of on homework, which is only 25% of our students, or more than, more than, so that would be this direction, that would be 50%. So let's write a conclusion here. It is more common for a sophomore to watch TV because 50% of the students watch greater or more than one hour of TV. So let's underline that. That that. Where did I get that fifty percent from? That's my blue on the graph, right? But let's just change color. Only twenty five percent. So now we're comparing the two. Spend. Uh, greater than one hour on homework. So that was the orange region. Okay? All right, I'm going to erase all that so I can mark up the picture to answer the other questions. Let's try the next question. For, que for questions 15 to 23, identify in each statement, if each statement is true, with the letter T, false, F or false, or cannot be determined, C, B, D. Okay? So question number 15, some sophomores didn't watch that TV that much. Okay, so let's go. And TV is right here. So the lower one, and you have something there. Minimum means that someone had zero minutes of TV time watch, which means they didn't watch TV, which would be the answer is true. Question number 16. The TV, the TV box and whisker graph contains more data than the homework graph. Okay, the TV um, box and whisker, so TV versus homework, contains more data. Okay, let's pause here. Does not say percents. Okay, so let me kind of point this out. The bottom part here that they don't have down here, this is a number line. This is minutes. Okay, minutes. And then the box plot, if you think about, is a percentage. Okay, now something that's missing on here that you don't know is how many people in that survey for TV time and how many people 
for the homework. Because remember, 225 represents minutes. And this just represents, well, this is the maximum someone watched, but we don't know how many students. So I can't compare like how many more students uh, watched homework versus doing their homework. So this answer would be C, B, D, can't be determined. Question number 17. 25% <clears throat> of sophomores spend between 48 and 60 minutes per night on homework. So let's go up to the homework. Let's locate um, 48 and 60. And they're saying that this region right here is 25%. Well, that's true because that's 25, 25 between, right? That's quartile uh, minimum to quartile one is 25%. Then this is Q1 to Q2, which is another 25, 25, and then 25 over here. So that would be true. Okay, let's try question number 18. 15% of sophomores uh, didn't watch TV that month. So let's go to TV. Right, TV, and it says 15%. Okay, look, this says percent. Do you see that? And up here, on percent, remember, all you have is 0, 25%, 50% right here, right? 75, and then the 100%. Okay, so we don't know enough math or statistics at this time to figure out 15%. Right? And then it says... Um, Yeah, we can't, we can't determine that. Didn't watch TV for that month. That, so that would be a zero minutes. <clears throat> um, so again, you don't know what the frequency is there. You don't know how many dots, dot plots there are, if that makes sense. All you have is just percentages. So for question number 18, it is CBD. Can't be determined. Okay. Question number 19. In general, these sophomores spend more time watching TV than homework. Okay, so let's read. Sophomores spend more time. So time now, we can actually look at the number line below. Uh, watching TV. So one kid, one student watched 225 compared to 190. So TV time is greater than homework time. That is true. Okay, let's try another one. The TV data is more varied than the homework data. So remember, varied is our word for spread. And think of jam, right? That's what I keep telling you guys. We're looking at our... our um, variability here. So let's look at TV. The TV keeps is is pushed out, right? You can you can tell by the range. That's one spread. That's the easiest spread, right? Max minus the min. This one is a little bit closer together. This one's closer together. This one's more spread out. The jam is spread out. It goes up to 225. Uh, so that would be true. Let's erase some of this. It's starting to get really messy, right? So that's a good thing about pencils. You can just go back and erase things. Um, super helpful. Marking it up. Don't waste my answer there. Okay. Question 21. The ratio. Okay. Ratio is just a fraction. A ratio is just a fraction. In fractions, you get decimals, which you can make percents, right? So the ratio of sophomores who spend more than 110 minutes per night. So let's go up to um, sophomores on TV watching. Okay, so it's TV watching at 110. 
So the ratio of sophomores who spend more than, so in this direction, well, if you recognize, again, you can mark up your box positive this today's lesson, that's min, Q1, Q2, or the median, Q3, and Q4, the max. So you're at Q3, which is 75 cents, 75 percent, that means this direction is only 25 percent. Okay, so that's my answer so far for the first part. <coughs> Okay, so they're saying the ratio of sophomores who spend more than 110 minutes per night, that's 25%, to those who spend less, less, is about 2 to 1. Okay, so less, let's just highlight it, would be in this direction. And we already said that represents 75%. Okay, so you can think of it as um, if, if the answer, let's just say it to make it true, 2 to 1 would just basically mean 50% uh, who have more than 10 minutes to 25%. Because if you reduce that, that would be 2 over 1. That's 2 to 1. Our case has uh, 25 to 75. No, let's just write that as 25 times 3. What am I doing? Blue. 25 times 1. And then 75 is 3 times 25. So if you reduce here, then you get a ratio of um, 1 to 3. That's what we have right here. So is question is, is 1 to 3 the same thing as 2 to 1? The answer is no. So that would be false. Again, if you made the statement true, it would have to be something like this one right here. Okay, question number 22. 225 sophomores watched TV. Okay, let's go up here. Okay, now this is a count. Okay, let's make sure, we're, even before I would go up there, this is not minutes. And this is not a percentage. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back up. If I go back to TV, and you might think, ah, 225. Remember, this 225 here means minutes. So this right here does not say 225 students did it, and then the 225th students is right here. It's saying that the, of all the students, which we don't know, um, one student or many students watched 225, okay? And because there's such a large gap in the data right here, I'm going to assume this is a rare student who's watching like four hours a day. So um, that one is you cannot be determined. Again, you can't, you don't know the total, right? If you look at the context, Remember what we talked about, the bottom is the number line, the top is percent, okay? Okay, last one. Twice as many sophomores watch TV for more than one hour. Let's double check this. And we're probably just going to be comparing a percentage. So if I go to TVs, and more than one hour. So from here, going in this direction, this would be 50%. So that means on this side, it's going to be 50%. So let's compare 50%. And let's use another color. Then homework for more than one hour. So let's go to homework. Again, one hour. For more than one hour, that's this way. So again, zero, that's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. So 25, 25, 25. So again, quartile three represents, you add those up, that's 75%. That means in this direction, it's only 25%. So 
how many of our sophomores are watching more than 60 minutes? It's only 25% of them. Okay, so let's do the math. It says twice as many sophomores watch um, TV for more than one hour than uh, do homework than one hour. So they're saying there's twice as many, so there's two 25s. Right, two times 25 gives you 50. So um, this one is true. All right, so that's our um, lesson on box pots, whiskers, and outliers. That was fun. See you guys.